Studies have shown that the younger you are when you get married, the less likely you are to stay married. We'll see an example of that today on Divorce Court. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Arlana Addison and Paris Sims. The two of you have been together for six years. You have been married for the last two. You have two children together, and you are only 22 years old. You do not want to be married anymore, and Ms. Addison, you want me to award you $3,000 in transitional support for Mr. Sims. But before we get anywhere near that, why don't you tell me how you were able to find the man that you were going to marry at 16? Well, I mean, it started off when I was in high school. Uh-huh. Um, I like the kind of rough guys and try to, like, transition them into, like, someone that I like to be with. Mm -hmm. And he was kind of rough. And I was more of the honor. what do you mean by rough? Like, um, got into a lot of trouble. Mr. Sims, were you, were you out there doing um, a little bit of badness when you met her? Yeah, I was. Yeah, she actually changed everything when I met her. Uh, so she How kept did me out she of manage that? She kept me out of trouble, told me the right things to do, and gave me life lessons. So far, it worked, and I made it this far without getting in trouble again. Why so. did you listen to her and nobody else? Because I'm sure your, your, your parents or your, you know, the school were all, were all telling you to do the right thing. How come you could hear her and not them? She was, she was a good girl. I mean, she had to know what to do. The people, other people tried to tell me what to do, but they was doing bad stuff they self and trying to give me advice. Right. You tell you how to do right and they doing wrong. Yeah, they doing wrong, too. So, so. I, I just really didn't listen to it. I just went in one ear and out the other. And I think that's a very good lesson we learned right here is there's no point to having a good woman if you don't listen to her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? A yeah. good woman doing the right thing, going in the right direction. You don't pull her down, you let her pull you up. You yeah. know, it doesn't make you less of a man. Yeah. It makes you more of a man. It's easier to do the wrong thing. It's a lot more fun. Children do it all the time. But when you man up and, and, and listen up and do the right thing, that's, that's something else. Ms. Addison, I like you two already. <laughs> so tell me when you first got, how long were you together before you first got pregnant? Um, I'd say we was together maybe three years. How old were you when you had the first baby? I was 19. You were 19. Were you alarmed? Um, not really. Did I mean, you plan the baby or was this a, a, a oops baby? I was kind of a planning. I mean, we, we both had good jobs. We both were managers at our jobs. We were doing pretty good at a young age. And it's like, why not? Why didn't you want to be young and single and in love and together before you started making a family? I mean, it was because I, was, I had myself together. You know, I know what I wanted. That was what I wanted. I had myself together at 19, too. But uh, I didn't have any children because I had, was, had at least another... 10 years of fun to have. I mean, I see it like this. When you, when I, I want to own my own business. Right. I can't take a break and have kids while I'm busy running the business. Mm -hmm. I can't tell them I'm not going to come in. So I said, hey, if I do it younger, my kids will be older. I can travel when I get older mm -hmm. and I'll be able to have my business. Let me tell you something. It sounds good on paper. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get easier when they're 14 and 15. It, it, it gets a little harder. But I'm just saying, I'm a proponent of postponing procreation. I'm just saying. Mrs. Addison, why don't you tell me when the second one came along? Um, it wasn't really too long ago. She's about one years old She's now. One, was she playing too? No, she was not. She was a oops baby. Yeah, she was a oops. <laughs> it just happened one day. I didn't even know I was pregnant for a long time. And uh -huh. then I just, I was came up to the doctor and they said, hey, you Hey, know, you're, gonna, you're yeah. gonna have a baby. But you two were married by then, correct? Yeah. No, we were, we were about to get married. We, the... You were about to get married. Uh -huh. Mr. Sims, were you at all concerned about getting married at such a young age? No, I don't think I set it down too soon. Okay. So tell me, Ms. Addison, what's the problem? What's gone wrong here? Okay, well, he says he's, he was ready, but to me, he wasn't because, like, when we got together, it was the, the same drama, you know? You, you say you're ready, but then you go cheat on me with seven different women. They weren't actually cheating. They was just friends. 
So I'm gonna put that but across. Well, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get Ms. Addison's stories first, and okay. then I'm gonna I'm gonna allow you to respond. Seven different women. Did you actually catch him? Yes. Give me uh, two or three examples before we allow him to respond. Um, well, I was about six months pregnant with our first child. Um, I just so happened to look out the window by God's grace, and mm -hmm. I caught him like approaching a woman when I looked watched out the window. Like now, when you say approach, he could have just been walking up to talk to her. I mean, be mindful. The windows are like paper thin. I heard everything he said. Like, what did he say? He uh, he asked her how was she doing. Could he have her number and everything? And she was our neighbor at that. Did you ask the neighbor girl for the number? Yes, we just talked. That's it. Just I was just there for support. Support. She, what, what, what kind of support did she need? She, she said she needed support. She was looking for a friend to talk to. I said, okay, you can talk to me. Ms. Addison, why don't you tell me about the next woman? Um, the next instance, he was at work. I came home, you know. I looked in his pants pocket for some reason. One of those things again. I just looked in his pocket and I find like phone numbers from different women. Not just one, not two. It had to be like five or six of them. And I, I went through the list, you know. I went calling these women because I'm like, you know, if you, you, my man got your number, I need to know why. Why? And she was like, yeah, he tried to talk to me. I'm like, oh, did he? And okay, I said, okay, that's fine. And I just I hung up, you know, to talk she to understood nobody. the I was situation. Just friends, whatever what, if, so I what didn't. you were doing was set up, setting up a private counseling service. Yeah, that's it. That's all I was trying to do. Were there any men in your pocket that needed support? No, no. Just women. Just women. So you just a public service out there. You just trying yeah. to do the right thing. Just the right thing. That's all I was trying to do. I got I got a spending limit every week. Um, every time I swipe the card, it comes to her phone. Do you have him on a spending limit? Yeah. Why do you feel that it is necessary to contain him thusly? I feel like I mean, if you can't be trustworthy, you can't be trusted. I want to talk to you about a statement you made about him, which is that he wants to have sex like a porn star. Explain that to me. I mean, he feels like because he's the man of the household that we're supposed to have sex 10, 12 times a day whenever he feels like it, however he wants it, because he's the man of the household. And I don't feel that way. I feel like if you can't make me happy, then I can't do nothing for you. You know, if I can't come home to candles lit, don't expect for you, you to come home to candles lit in lingerie, you know? If I, you can't help make me feel good, I can't do nothing for you. Ooh. Uh, Mr. Sims, let me ask you. Do you, are you getting enough sex? Not, not enough like I wanted to go. Not, yeah, not so enough. So you're not talking quantity, you're talking quality. No, I'm talking about, well, yeah. Doing not, what not you want to do. Yeah, do what, yeah. Yeah, now, let me ask you this. Have you been... Are you a little less romantic than you used to be? Yeah, I am. I'm not gonna lie about that. Yeah. Would it be so hard to be the romantic devil you used to be in high school now that you're married? When it comes to the sex, like, we husband and wife, why can't I have sex when I want to? You're like, I'm a, a, different, a, no, a different guy you just got off the street or something. I'm not... I, let me explain it to you, okay? Let me explain it to you. You want the sex to remain hot and heavy while you don't want the romance to remain hot and heavy. You want to keep what you want without giving her what she needs. Women need the romance part. It's not extra, it's not spare, it's something that we need in order to warm up our engines. Our sex lives are more entwined with, our, with, with the rest of our lives than it is with you. So if you want sex often, you need to give romance, period, end of story. You may not understand it. You don't have to understand it. You don't have to be thirsty to get me a glass of water, but if I'm your wife, you should get me a glass of water should I ask for it. You with me? Yeah, I was. Yeah. You okay? Did I do all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you say that she's controlling with the money. Explain that to me. All right. Uh, I, got, I got a spending limit every week. Uh, every time I swipe the card, it comes to her phone. <laughs> yeah. Every time. Do you have him on a spending limit? Yes, I do. And do you see every swipe that he does comes on your phone? Yes. Why do you feel that it is necessary to contain him thusly? I feel like, I mean, if you can't be trustworthy, you can't be trusted. Well, why and can't then, you trust it? 
I mean, if you're out with other women, how I know that's not for it? Where did you get I, out I, with other yeah. women? I, we've, to talk, we've talked about those seven phone numbers, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's admitted that he was wrong. Had a little weak excuse and all of that about they needed support. And we all know that's silly and stupid. <laughs> but, 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 we're, but we're past that. Is there anything other than those seven phone numbers that you're hanging on to in the present day that keeps you from trusting him? I mean, not other than looking at people. And then, like, I, I, I gave him a card. I gave him full access. And he spent, like, $100 on snacks. When it comes to you spend your money all in one day stupidly, and then you come to me tomorrow needing more money, and I have to give you money to eat for the rest of the week while you're at work and everything else, I mean, that's, like, a waste of the time of making a budget. I tell you what I did. I used to have a son. I give him a certain amount of money every month to do whatever he needed to do because he's in school and law school and all this. And one, dude, one day he called me and says, Mom, I'm out of money. And I said, best of luck to you. <laughs> <laughs> you do that one time, he don't do it no more. Like, if we ever get into an argument, she tell me every time we get into an argument, I go meet this dude, you know, I'm about to go out to the club. I'm, I really want to go to a bar and meet other guys. Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Don't forget to join the conversation on social media. Go to facebook.com slash divorcecourt and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at divorcecourt. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Mrs. Addison, I understand you have some serious concerns about family. Why don't you tell me what's going wrong and why you think it has such a negative impact on your marriage? Um, it's just, like, over, like, a lot of stuff. Like, um, for example, like, ever since his brother moved down to where we are, mm -hmm. it's like he's becoming his brother. And I, I don't like that. It's like he wants to drink all the time. He just wants to go out and party and never be at the house and always at his brother's house. So I always trying to do something with his brother. And I every, don't like that. Hang week. on, hang on. Okay. Especially, like, you know, when you're out late, you know, I feel like at a certain time you should be in the house if I let you go out. Are you hanging out and partying a lot with your brother? I say not a lot. I say every, like, other weekend or something like that. She's saying it like it's every day. Mm -hmm. it's like every, every other day. weekend. Now, when you're talking every other weekend, how hard do you party? I mean, do you go out till 2 and then come on home? Or do you guys stay out all night, keep the party going? And... Nah, we, don't we don't stay all night. We'll, we'll drink heavily all, like, until about probably 1 and then... You'll drink heavily until yeah. 1? Yeah, and then I get to the uh, call her if I can't drive home come pick me up but I mean I don't stay out all night yeah getting, coming in at all we go out to a club or you guys buying a bottle and sitting on the back porch uh, we at his house we ain't going to no clubs no strip clubs I ain't doing no it's just me and him family yeah. drinking so y'all just sit down as a family and get turned up yeah just turned up yeah is he only doing it every other weekend no, it's like, okay, for example, one weekend, he said, you know, we got upset, we got into an argument the previous day, and he said, okay, I'm gonna spend my whole day with you tomorrow. Tomorrow's about you. Me and you, we're gonna go out, we're gonna just hang out all day. And come tomorrow, he said, oh, you know, can I go over to my brother's house? You know, can I go over there and drink? I'm like, what do you mean, can you go drink? You just said you was gonna spend the day with me. I said, okay, that's fine. Do that, we just do it tomorrow, the next day. And then the next day, it was the same thing. And I feel like, you know, if you're going to spend all your time over there drinking, then what are you with me for? Go move in with my, them. I might add, they do invite her to come over. She just don't come. Yeah. They, they don't like, they just say, hey, hey, Paris, come over with they us. They ask hey. for her to come, yeah, too. they ask for her to come, Ms. too. Ms. Addison, do you, they ask for you to come as well? Yes, but I'm a lady. What I look like getting sloppy drunk all the time, you know? Right, yeah. It's not an interesting thing you're doing over there, I got to say. You know, it's not attractive either, you know. Uh, but I think that leads me to something else that Mrs. Addison said in her papers that I think is very much a concern of hers. She said she's bored. Explain that to him, not to me, because I get it. You explain that to him. Okay, it's like I wake up every morning, 
at the same time and I do the same thing every day. Like, and when I try to go out, it's the issue. You don't want me to go out. You want me to stay at home all day. Even when the kid's not there, you don't want me to go out. You know, I, I feel like I do the same thing every day and I could be doing other things. You know, I feel like I have, I, I'm getting a business degree. It's other things I could be doing than sitting at the house all day looking at the walls. Would you have a problem if she were, were to go to school and get, and, and get a business degree? I mean, I don't got a problem. But I mean, the things she say to me, why I got a problem with it, the things she say to me, that's the reason why I don't let her do it. Tell me what those things are. Like, if we ever get into an argument, she tell me every time we get into an argument, I go meet this dude, you know, I'm about to go out to the club. I'm, I really want to go to a bar and meet other guys and this and that. That's why I don't let her really do nothing. And she talking about stay-at-home mom, she acts. She wanted to be a stay-at-home mom. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's why I let her do. You have a right to change your mind. You have a right to, to branch out. You have a right to reach up, reach over, reach beyond so you can become a full and whole person, okay? And you, and, and you don't have the right to restrict her from doing that. That said, you need to have enough sense to know that the way to help him come along with your freedom, because you can't ask him for your freedom, because it's not your, his to give. It's yours. You own it. He can't stop you. But the way to make him comfortable with the freedom that you want is not to say all kinds of crazy crap to him when you're arguing about you gonna get another dude. Be a part of the Divorce Court conversation on social media. People always have something to say. We put new clips on Instagram every week. You, him, and a sugar daddy all lived in one house? Yes. Can't make this stuff up. <laughs> you can follow us on Facebook and check out our Twitter feed. You can also use the resources on our new website, divorcecourt.com. This is the part why I tell you why I was so concerned about you guys getting married so young. You said, I knew what I wanted and I thought I was ready. This is the not ready that you are. If you are a grown person and are secure, you don't worry about what your partner is doing. But when you're young, you don't have enough knowledge, you don't have enough background, you don't have enough breadth and depth and understanding. All you know is that high school, who's he seeing, who's she seeing business. This is where your immaturity is coming out in full bloom. The fact that you can hold down a job and keep the, keep the babies together and diapered and all that kind of stuff, that doesn't mean you're ready. You have to be ready to trust one another or else the relationship is nothing but an ongoing investigation. So what you need to do from today forward is to decide that whatever happened before ends today. And you're going to behave as if yesterday did not occur. You're going to let those seven phone numbers go, and you're going to act like a grown woman who is comfortable in her own skin and is capable of keeping her own man. Not only that, you need to understand this. If he does something wrong, you can always roll, and you can always roll with a degree under your arm because you're going to school. Do you understand that? You are going to school. <laughs> I want them to have an educated mother. I want them to have a mother that has an outlet and has depth and has, has interests beyond the household. I want them to have more than just, you know? Do you understand what I'm talking about, Mr. Sims? Yeah, I understand. You a bad dude, not if you can keep your woman in your house. You a bad dude if your woman can go anywhere you want, she wants to and comes home to you. There's a big difference. Yeah. You want $3,000 for transitional support. You're not going anywhere, are you? I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try it first. I'm gonna give no, you, you get it first. I'm gonna give you a book. It's called Making Marriage Work. It's for you. for people who don't know what to do, and you clearly don't know what to do. <laughs> so I'm gonna give it to you. I'm not gonna give you transitional support, but I, did you hear what I told you? Seriously. Yeah, I heard. Did you hear? I understand. I want you to read that book about how it is you're not defined by what he does, and you're gonna make him do things that he doesn't want to do. You, you, you're gonna inspire your own leaving if you don't get it together. You got it, me? I got you. Good luck to you. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> the best way to stay out of trouble is to keep away from where it lives. No collecting telephone numbers of people from the opposite sex once you get married. It's a rule.
If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com.